Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about this 60 color gouache set by Oteza, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. On the top of the box here you can see that we have information on all 60 colors, which includes the color number and name, light fastness, opacity, pigment, and all of that information. As you can see, some of these pigments, like lemon yellow and yellow ochre, are made up of just one pigment, while we also have lots and lots of colors that are made up of two, three, even four pigments. And I want to talk to you during this video about why that had me concerned right away, and how I'm actually going to be using this gouache, how I have been using it, and how I plan to use it in the future. You guys may know that I already had a smaller set of Arteza gouache that I really like to use for studies or for exploring things and some of those colors I even have mixed in with my professional watercolors. These are technically a student grade watercolor, but Arteza is really kind of trying to provide the most for a lower price, so you've got lots of information on these paints, which I appreciate. And I really liked how some of these little trays looked just together as color palettes. I thought it was already pretty inspiring. And as you can see, there are some labels here that don't necessarily match up with the color that's actually in the tube. So some of them are pretty close, but some of them you definitely have to swatch out the color ahead of time to see what it really looks like because in a lot of cases, the label on the tube is not exactly reliable. So let me show you here some of the pieces I've already been doing with this gouache and then I will talk to you guys about how I'm using them. I started out my February break by kind of working on these larger portrait studies and I'm using also Arteza's expert watercolor paper. This paper is 9 by 12 inches, 140 pound, 100% cotton watercolor paper, which also claims to be double-sided, which is really interesting. And I have been using both sides. And the texture looks something like this. What I have come to find is my preferred method for working with this paint. I originally was thinking about swatching out all the colors for you guys, which I hope you don't mind, I'm not going to do, just because I'm that's not how I'm working with these paints. But what I am doing is kind of building limited color palettes. So the palette that I'm starting with here is kind of standard. I've got a medium yellow, a warm and cool red, and actually a green. I think I picked Viridian. So having been originally inspired by how the colors were laid out in their trays, I've actually been using these paints because there's such a wide variety of them to create limited palettes and work with just three or four colors at a time. I think that this is one of the biggest strengths of a set like this that has so many colors because I know you could get palettes and lay them all out so you have access to all of them at one time, but for me this works a lot better as I'm not kind of overwhelmed by having too many options. I found for me that's one of the quickest ways for me to end up with muddy color is having too many color options at once. So limiting that and kind of working with a few at a time is really nice. While the set with so many colors provides a lot of options, you can really mix things up and get some really interesting color combos. You may have noticed with this piece that I didn't start with a sketch. That's another thing that I've really been enjoying in experimenting with opaque mediums like gouache is I can kind of just go right in by defining big shapes of whatever it is I'm trying to paint. Let's be honest, they're pretty much all portraits. And then building the forms in as I go. I found this to be really helpful with gouache by starting with really loose watercolor-like layers and then building up thicker paint on top of the thinner paint. And most artists who are professionals who use gouache will tell you to work this way, starting with thinner layers and working up to thicker ones. But of course, as always, you can do it however you'd like. I've just been discovering that this is really, really helpful for me when working with gouache. I've really been enjoying experimenting with limited palettes like this, and I've been trying to challenge myself to experiment with colors that I don't always use or don't always put together. I tend to 
In the past, I've tended to avoid green a lot, but I've actually really, really been enjoying it lately for mixing skin tones with reds because they neutralize each other so well. Another thing I've been learning, as there's a lot of purple on this piece now that doesn't really help in the darkest areas, I've kind of been learning that I'm not a huge fan of a lot of shades of purple. I feel really, really picky about purple. There are a few like warm, dusty, desaturated purples that I like. Um, this one is not the best example, and you'll notice that I went in and ended up covering a lot of it up. One of my favorite things about this squash set and this paper is because it's so affordable, I really don't mind just going in and using it without feeling like I'm not necessarily wasting, but using up very quickly something that's more expensive. So I can work on these little pieces just to experiment with techniques, and it's a lot of fun. Lay your head on my chest. Here I want to show you my one big gripe with this gouache and I'm and I'm putting it here next to a quick little painting I did with some professional quality gouache and what you're going to notice with this statue like study thing that I did with Arteza gouache is that the gouache tends to have a bit of a chalky finish to it especially in those more opaque layers and while the color blocks in pretty nicely it has it it just dries chalkier and you can see over here i used the arteza paper again i feel like i used to say arteza and now i'm saying arteza and i don't know why so forgive me guys <laughs> for my inconsistencies but the piece over on the professional side i feel like just doesn't have that chalkiness as much i also found with my professional gouache that i just didn't need as much paint to get that nice saturated pigment so it's something to keep in mind Either way, I've been having a lot of fun with this gouache. You guys can find links for the products that I'm using down in the description. As we've talked about before, I am an Arteza. Arteza. Oh no, I feel like I have to say Arteza now because I started the video that way. I am an Arteza affiliate, so the links down in the description are affiliate links, but I'll also leave links to their listings on Amazon, as I recommend checking both places to make sure you're getting the best price because it does fluctuate. I've really, really been enjoying using this gouache for looser portrait studies like this. So you can see I've got my reference over here up on Pinterest and I can just kind of block in big colors. It's been really nice because I don't need these pieces to be perfect. I'm just experimenting and by working with the combination of knowing that this is a study and I'm working with this gouache that I know is more affordable, I'm able to just kind of really loosen up and have a lot of fun exploring things and exploring opaque mediums. And this has been really, really helpful for me because I've been able to do a lot of things quickly and I'm starting to really love working opaquely like this. And of course, I'm still gonna be using my watercolors a ton. I have a lot of exciting watercolor things to share with you guys. But working with this combination of materials in this way has been really liberating for me and very, very encouraging. And having all of these gouache colors and so many options and knowing that there's color combinations that I haven't tried out yet makes me really excited to get them out again and keep exploring and keep experimenting. So that pretty much sums up the things I really like about this gouache. We've talked about some of the negatives already, being the chalkier finish, and also in my practice and in my experience, the number of pigments in the paints has actually mattered. So the colors with more pigments either look muddier right out of the tube, or when you try to mix them with other colors, it, they don't stay very clean. They get muddy very quickly. And I'm assuming with a 60 color set like this, they're kind of intending for you to not need to mix as many colors, which I can understand. You kind of want to use the colors as they are right out of the tube without mixing them too much with other things. And an interesting fact about this that I actually found a little bit disappointing at first, but 
I don't know if it matters that much in the end. I was really curious, as there's lots of multi-pigment colors in here, how many pigments were used for all of them. And we've got a total of 60 colors in our set, and there are only 18 pigments used. What that means is a lot of the colors are made up of mixes of the same pigments, so you have a lot of colors that are going to show up like phthalo blues and yellow ochres, black and white are used in a lot of the colors, and it's really just combinations of the same mixes, which ultimately means that there's only 18 pigments used. You could mix a lot of these colors on your own, so it's really up to you whether or not this set is worth it. If you want to have that inspiration of having all of the colors laid out in front of you and you can build a little limited palettes like I've been doing, you're more than welcome to do that. If you're thinking that if there's only 18 pigments in here anyway, I might as well just get the 24 color set and mix my own colors and save some money, I may recommend that over getting the 60 color set for myself personally as you're going to have cleaner colors from the start that you can mix with one another and you'll learn a bit more about color mixing that way. So the choice is yours. I've had a lot of fun with this 60 color set and I'm really, really happy that Arteza sent it to me as well as the paper to check out and review for you guys. I'm definitely going to keep using it this way, but please do let me know down in the comments whether you think it's worth it to get a set with this many colors or if you'd prefer a smaller set for less money where you can mix your own colors. I can see the appeal either way. And as always, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I'm so excited to be making videos for you guys again. Lots of exciting things coming in the future and I will talk to you all later. Bye guys. The best painting I've ever saw, too. Really? Well, thank you. That you've made. I also really like that one. You did a great job on all of these. You focused and didn't do anything wrong. They're all perfect. Oh, sweet kid. That one. <laughs>